We are back in the Let's Play world. Welcome everybody to some more Minecraft. This is your friendly slime Dallas here. I am back from my hiatus. Uh, I just need a little break to rekindle my ideas for Minecraft. For lack of better terms, I was playing another game, Starfield. <laughs> but this slight week and a half break somewhere around there, I've been developing more ideas. I'm standing in front of my bank because we're going to build the most intricate vault system let me rephrase that. We're going to build my most intricate vault system in Minecraft, compared to my other one at least, uh, which is going to be below this building. As you know, my last vault, which is in the lab, which of course is right here, um, is not that secure. Anyone can walk through this. The only thing stopping it, I guess, is for when I come in here, it stops mobs from coming from this really bright room that they'll totally spawn in. <laughs> wow, I have no iron. That is sad. As much as I love this place, we're going to make one that could be player-proof, too. So let's say behind the wall here, we're going to have an obsidian wall. Of course, that wouldn't stop a player, but it stops from maybe, let's say, blasts from the other side, just all protected. And instead of this, we're going to have a security code, a really cool one, and I think I want to have a big vault door, too. And I'd be able to get those beacons back, which is nice. This is all talk, though. Um, we're just going to see what systems I implement into this. But first of all, I got a lot of digging to do. I kind of miss playing with shaders on. I'm going to be underground, though. All right, well, this became more of a challenge than I thought. Oh, I thought that was a pigment. That's a door. <laughs> That's how all my projects usually go. I have it pictured perfectly in my head, and then I attack it, and then I'm confused. But uh, as you can see, I don't even know what I showed you last. Uh, I have the staircase coming down this way. I believe this is going to be the color of the walls down here. But I have it splitting in a T here. I don't know what to turn this into. I'm thinking about turning this into offices and like a conference room. Where we discuss finances or something. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but first I have this. It's just going to be a mass storage system for all the citizens. You, I I'm not going to make it complicated. You just get a lever, which I do not have. And then you'd open one of these doors. And each of them are about this size. You can put large things in here, but you also have storage right here. I think it'll be a good idea to put some of the citizens' names above these. I have a couple large ones, too. Maybe I'll take one of these for me. I don't know what I would put in here. I'd put valuables in there, but not necessarily, like, my emeralds. Uh, because I want to have giant vaults for those. And I built a really cool vault in my test world. But I decided I'm not going to have some intricate passcode or anything like that. Because I find when I end up needing something from my vault, I hate going through the steps of opening the vault. So my vault door is going to be swung open at all times so I can just walk in there, grab what I want, and walk out. Just gotta decide where I want to put these vault doors. Ah, oh, this is difficult. I didn't like how it was turning out, so I just completely gutted the inside. Now it's just one big room. <laughs> what are you doing, Dallas? Um, so I'm building vaults here now. I think I'm going to have two of them closed, because maybe other people in the town own them, but this one's going to be mine, it's going to be swung open. As you can see, I'm using copper, and I am going to build this one here with you guys, just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. I put these furnaces on the corners. You guys ever have that issue? When you're trying to swap something in your inventory, and it takes you about, like, three tries to get it to swap? Like, look. I can't swap it. What? Okay, now it swapped. Oh my god. <laughs> put some observers here. Some polished- no, no. I swear I get annoyed by the most simple things. I think it comes from playing Minecraft for so long. I, it goes for anything. The longer you do something, the more you get annoyed by the smallest things. Okay, that detail is all there just to make it look like gears and cogs. I'm gonna put that there. Use some copper stairs. I'm gonna do a lightning rods. No. This is gonna be the handle. I'm gonna use some blackstone buttons, put them right there, and we're going to put some normal stone buttons right here to make it look like the rods that go into the wall when it's shut. On the back side, I'm just going to put that there, I guess, put some deep slate walls, and some andesite walls. That's a pretty thick door. It looks heavy duty. I'm going to replace these two with some polished deep slate, and then attach these, and that is our vault door. <laughs> Uh, I don't want these to oxidize. I need to go get some honeycomb. Now, how the heck do I build this place? I have something going on there. I have no idea what I want this place to look like. 
Now I'm also tasked with how do I want this vault to look? Do I go even bigger? I don't want to go bigger actually. I want to go smaller and more confined hallways. I think I still want to store my ore out in the open, but be more reasonable with it. Make it look more as a decoration, but have the majority of it in barrels and chests. I made some Marcus stalls. Actually really like these. We could, I guess, put a villager in here. Since these are fences, I don't know if a baby zombie could climb up this. I think they would get stopped, correct? If not, well, I guess we'll find out. But uh, I'd like to put some villagers back here. I got another one over here as well. Just a yellow one. And I could actually put useful traders in there. So if I need something real quick, I could, actually stone masons would be nice. Thanks, game. This is rain at the perfect times. I also made <laughs> another advertisement. Look, Burger Man's. So soon we're going to be making Burger Man's shop, and I think this is a good idea to actually like put up an advertisement. I like using this building as a big advertisement building because it's a lot of blank space. I think this turned out pretty good. It looks really nice. Well, let's get back to the bank here. I want to try to 100% this today, even in here. Well, maybe not in here. <laughs> Mainly because of the ceiling. I don't know what to do with that. I guess I got to make I got to make it look fancy, like chandeliers. It's got to look nice. But uh, this place is coming along. Still gotta do the floor. But uh, as you can see, this is going to be the room where just mainly accountants and other people stay. So I'm gonna have some desks. I'm also gonna have a lot of computer screens. As you can see, we got four vaults. One's open, and this one's obviously mine. We're going to have it, like I said, it's gonna be relatively small. Uh, but I have it going down here. So this is a little storeroom. I might store armor in here, but I'm thinking I wanna put like a passcode lock. Right here, not a complicated one, maybe like three levers, and then it'll open up a piston door. If you haven't noticed, every place we end up building, we make a new vault. We have a vault at the house, we also have a vault at the lab, and then now we're gonna make one at the city. You guys might not like this, but I think I'm slowly transitioning to live over here. It's probably gonna be really sad to do, but what if I end up moving out of my greenhouse completely and just live in the city? Okay, my vault is 100% complete and I'm happy with it. It's not too big. It's just simple relatively, I guess. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, we got a combination lock here. Uh, I believe that was right, yeah. So this leads into a medium sized room. I think this is where I'm gonna put my iron and gold. Now that I think about it, I should probably make another room. So this is gonna be iron and gold. Again, I'm gonna put some of it out in the open just to represent that this is that room, but most of it is going to be put in chests and barrels. So uh, yeah, that is that. It leads over here. This is just a room that I can put maybe some armor in. As you can see, I have display cases if I want to put armor in there. Then we have another combination here. This leads into this type of room, and this is going to be where I hold my emerald. So I'm gonna have tables lined in here with emeralds laid out on them. I'm gonna have pallets. I'm gonna have drawers. This is just where I keep my main wealth. And again, these passcode locks aren't <laughs> really useful, but it just adds that extra bit of immersion, if you know what I mean. I miss having an office. Why don't I have one yet in the city? Oh man, is my frog still in here? Yep. <laughs> Oh, my big desk here. I was gonna say, if you have any ideas where to put an office, let me know, but then I thought that's the whole point of the Slime Science headquarters that I just completely haven't built yet. Well, at least the interior, so, oh my gosh. Do you know how long that's gonna take? I think it would be so cool once we get that place going, though. All right, well, I guess it's time to retire this vault. Uh, I mean, I, I still like it. It's just we're not over here anymore, so there's no reason to, you know, keep it. Maybe I'm going to keep it. I might as well just keep those there because it's cool, but I'm going to gather up all these resources and put them in my new vault area. That's just how this game works for me. Wherever we're working, I am going to eventually move my stuff over there. When I said I'm going to move out of my greenhouse, I didn't mean that. I, I just love it too much. Uh, we still technically live there. We just, we are, we work in the city. How about that? So we keep a lot of our resources at the city. <laughs> I'm gonna blabber and complain some more because I'm bored mining all this. You know what the main reason I left this lab for is, and I haven't been in here in a while? This lighting error. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it puts me off so much. Yes, I could probably replace the floors and come up with a new design, but there's a lot of floor in the lab. I don't, I don't want to do that. It should be simple enough for Mojang to just fix it, but it's been over two years 
since they've noticed this lighting error and they don't fix it. And it definitely is a lighting error because obviously when I built it, it wasn't like this and now it is. I've submitted on forums complaining about it, but I guess I never look at those. I don't know, in my honest opinion, ever since Microsoft has acquired Minecraft, I feel like they care more about quantity over quality nowadays. And the quality of life of the game is just not where it needs to be. But that's just my perspective. Pack up everything in here. I can't believe I forgot I had four <laughs> netherite blocks in here. Should probably turn out the lights in here too. I kind of liked this room. Maybe I'll make another one similar to this over there too. I went ahead and turned out the lights up here. I'm not removing all these torches. Just making it look like we don't use it anymore. <laughs> Rest in peace, old vault. Okay, so I believe this first little locked room is gonna be like this. So these blocks probably won't ever be taken. They're just to signify that's the area where these chests go. So yeah, all the gold will go in there, iron over here, and diamond over here. I like this. It's simple and honestly, when I need lots of gold or lots of iron, I can finally just go in a chest and grab a stack instead of sitting there for 10 minutes mining it all up. <laughs> okay, uh, I put some diamond armor down here. I actually don't have a lot of emeralds left. I've been spending them a lot trying to get these villagers' professions locked, so I'm a little poor right now, but I'm gonna make this room look, I'm gonna try to make it look cool. And I'm not just storing gold, iron, diamond, and emerald here. I want it to look like I store just valuables here. So let's say in this hallway, for example, I can have like boxes. Okay, this is gonna be my emerald room. Um, <laughs> I'm so poor on emeralds that I couldn't even make this a complete solid block, but don't judge me, I miss having those. But I want, I'm gonna set my foot down. I wanna be rich in Minecraft. I'm tired of being the one scrounging for emeralds when I need them. I just wanna have them ready. How long have I been in this world? Almost 10 years, and I'm, uh, it's sad. I said we're gonna have to make a trading market in town, which I think will be a pretty fun project, and I need to learn the basics of, well, gaining a lot of emeralds from villagers. Because I wanna create these roleplay elements in my world where people get jealous of me and they try to rob my banks and I can set up scenarios where it looks like a bank robbery scene like the other bank we had. And it'll make me have to transition to a new area so areas in my world have stories. I don't know, that's how I have fun in Minecraft. But anyway, I just came up with this idea in my test world. I wanted to design a treasure chest. So we have chests in this game, which is this, but I wanna make an actual physical chest with the top open like that, and you can see the goodies on the inside, so I have some like chests laying out through here. Let's try it. Okay, I think I have everything I need. Now where do I wanna put it? Uh, they're, it's rather large. Okay, perhaps in here, because yeah, yeah. This is a decent room, so I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna surround this by trap doors, and we're gonna do upside down stairs like that, and then upright stairs like that. It's a pretty big chest. <laughs> and we can replace a few of these with jungle just to mess with the textures a bit. I only have small in the normal amethyst clusters, but uh, yeah, it'd be better if you could mix it all up with all the different sizes. But yeah, look at that. It's just a chest full of amethyst. Like a really large chest. I kind of like that. It's a bit big, but I tried making a smaller one, like just too wide. It just didn't look good enough. Plus, you can have this really cool lid. I like it. I mean, I guess we can have another chest right here. This will be a smaller version. You can do that. What could we put in here? Well, I guess this would actually make sense more <laughs> in this room because I want to put gold in it. Yeah, let's get rid of these two. It's a work in progress, people. This is usually what I do when I have no idea what to do and I'm not recording. I'm just like, does this look good? No, it doesn't look good. Destroys the whole thing. Have it open like that? Yeah. Now we got all these knickknacks, specifically elytra wings, totems of undying. So I just need to make like shelves everywhere. Box. Don't need to put anything in it, but it's a box. <laughs> Uh, let's head down here. I guess we can fill all these up. Place that. 
another one. Boom, 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 boom. Put some elytra wings on display. Does that look all right? Yeah, I like that. What's funny is, I get all of these elytra wings. I have a bunch of them now because we go back to the in-city quite a bit. Oh, I like how it glows. I need to check this out in RTX too, but um, I still have the first pair I've ever had. That's the thing about mending. But if you didn't have mending on elytra wings, it would break so fast and you'd go through elytra wings within like a couple episodes. So maybe that would have limited me on using them so much, but I don't know. I never come across this and I just haven't died and lost everything in a very long time. Knock on wood. I'm filling these up. I've learned in my world over time when I'm bored and running through it and I see random decorations such as like this, we all have the instinct to just right click it and see what's inside. And when there's nothing inside, I get a slight disappointment. Like, uh, I could have put something in there. So I'm gonna start doing that. I've been doing it all throughout my city, by the way, of everything you see will have something in it. So I might even leave a few surprises in some places to surprise me and even my world download people. Got a little table here, I guess, full of stuff. I like the simplicity in here. I'm really digging that. And I just realized I don't have a place to put my netherite stuff. <laughs> Oh, well, where do I put this? In here, maybe? I guess so. Let's just do a little table, like so. Put maybe a barrel on it. One of these. There we go. I like that. Well, I guess that's everything. Uh, close everything up. Get out of here. Randomize that so you guys don't guess it. <laughs> uh, you guys probably already saw it. Ah, uh, only if this could close. I'm not gonna lie, I saw some Minecraft, what was it, create mod or something like that? Where you could have actual vault doors or flying vehicles that you build. I'm really itching to try it, but I know, I, last time I tried modded on my channel, yes, I actually do have a modded Minecraft series. It got really crap views, so. Those are some of the main reasons I don't try mods, because they just don't get good views. Okay, y'all, I believe that's gonna be about it for today. Didn't get anywhere near finishing this place, but it's just the amount of stuff I did. <laughs> Took a lot of time, so uh, I'm gonna run down there and check it out in RTX, but before we do that, I'm gonna answer today's comic question, which is from Avalanche5167. Now that Starfield is out, oh boy, Dallas about to talk about Starfield. <laughs> what was your first experience like? I wanna hear all the rambles. Do you now? I feel like a lot of you were like, oh, Jesus, here we go. Because yes, I am about to ramble about it. <laughs> Before we do that, let's see what this place looks like. Ooh, I kinda like it. Not the torches though. Torches are still too warm. I know there's better RTX packs out there. I just haven't touched them yet. Oh, I love how the vaults are shiny too. Look at this. Oh, you can see the room. That's so cool. God, I just, I, how long have I had this new computer and messed with RTX and I still drool over it as if it is my first experience. This looks a little plain for some reason. Maybe it's just stone. I think that's it. But yeah, this place looks just about how I thought it would. Those look kind of cool. Looking nifty. All right. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, Starfield. Um, it's been getting some weird attention. And I believe that attention is mainly directed from people who can't play it or want to play it but can't because it is Xbox exclusive. Well, you can play on PC too. But I understand sort of where that's coming from because for so many years, I absolutely despised PlayStation exclusive. I grew up playing Spider-Man, like the original Spider-Man games because I used to play on PS2. But when I got an Xbox 360, I transitioned to Xbox only. So the new Spider-Man games that came out on PlayStation, I'm just like, eh, looks like crap. I don't want to play it. And like, I, I just had this click in my head that automatically hated the game because I knew I couldn't play it. Now, I should say, my brother actually got me a PlayStation 5 for Christmas, which was probably the most insane gift I've ever received. <laughs> and since I am, still an Xbox gamer at heart, I sometimes find it hard to just get on the PlayStation and play. He did provide me with quite a few games, including Spider-Man, All the God of Wars, and I believe Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a really cool looking game. And I've sat down and played a little bit of God of War, but I've never actually wanted to sit down and just have full-on gaming sessions uh, with the PlayStation for some reason. And I feel like 
an absolute piece of crap because he got me this insane gift and I don't even really touch it. I don't know, I was just put in a weird position where like, I wanted to play Xbox games still because I got the new Xbox. What I'm getting at is, is that people who are on the other side of the spectrum, when a game comes out on the console they don't have, you kind of are hardwired to just immediately not like it. And I feel like that's sort of the reception Starfield is getting right now because Starfield is one of the best games and possibly the best game I've ever played in my life. Now those are some big, you know, scores saying it's the best game I've ever played. It's up there with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I haven't beat it yet. I'm taking my absolute time with it because I'm trying to just experience it all for the first time because the story is magnificent. The side quests are magnificent. I'm exploring the freaking Milky Way on my own. It's just the coolest experience ever. I'm uploading some footage of it on my second channel. I already have one video up there and I'm about to uh, upload another one over there. And I'm not gonna spoil anything here, um, but the game is also getting a lot of other weird hate too. Specifically, stuff like too many loading screens. I mean, this is to be expected with Bethesda. I mean, it is a full-fledged galaxy game where you can explore the galaxy. But one weird one I see a lot of people complain about is, let's say you wanna go from one planet to the other. They wanna have like a seamless transition. And they compare it to Jedi like Fallen Order, for example. You can go into this hyperdrive and walk around your ship. The thing people need to realize is, is those are two completely different games on two completely different engines. Bethesda has an engine that can do a lot of things that Unreal Engine 5 cannot do, which is what Jedi, I think, Survivor is on. Whatever that, Fallen Order, whichever one. So to compare the two's different game mechanics, how you travel to different places, is not fair in my opinion. And if you're a true RPG fan, you realize real shortly that Traveling to places is much better when it's just a fast travel scene. <laughs> There's no way I want to explore a thousand different planets and just travel to each one and take like two minutes to get to it every time. That It gets a little rough. But those are the only talking points I've seen about the game that are just like kind of, well, no, I've seen a lot of negative talking points, but it's mainly just, I think, butthurt people who can't play it. Go get yourself an Xbox, play it. But no, like I said earlier, I understand. Starfield is by far one of the most insane games I've ever played in my life. It's the Star Wars experience everyone, every Star Wars fan has always wanted to feel. This feels more like Star Wars than Star Wars feels like Star Wars. <laughs> as weird as that is, because like the build I'm going for is like a heavy Mandalorian bounty hunter build. It's just really cool. I'm getting really nerdy here. I'm gonna shut up. Starfield is fantastic. I'm probably gonna put a review up on, on my second channel when I'm finished with the game, but uh, yeah. My initial review right now, fantastic. I'm playing it after this video. <laughs> uh, but we did get some donations, obviously, in this 10, 11 day break. Um, Landon, Owen, Owen B. He donated this, again, because I butchered his name last time. You actually pronounce his last name, Owen B. Owen B. I would have never guessed that. I said Owen B. <laughs> or Owen B. What did I guess, Owen B? Owen. I feel like you'd need an E in there to say it like that. I bet people... Mess up your name all the time. But Jesus, Landon, thank you for another... You didn't even have to donate that much to correct your name, but you did. That You're just an insane supporter. I appreciate that. You're awesome. And Michael Buckridge, back with another donation. I read your messages, too. A lot of them are very sweet. Michael, hope things get better for you. And I'm glad my videos can help you. Oakley Cracknell. <laughs> interesting. I don't mean to sound like I'm making fun of your name. It's just an interesting name. Oakley Cracknell. Thank you for your kind donation. And Dylan Matters. That's familiar. That's a very familiar name. Med? Medders? Who left a very kind donation to, I believe it was Pee Pee Poo Poo. That's my brother, by the way, if you didn't know. <laughs> and Scout Hackett with a massive Fallout 4 type donation. I say that is because it's Vault 111. Did you play Fallout 4? Is that why you did that? Probably not. But that's such a huge donation. And Paul Toter with a kind donation as well. Oh my gosh, thank you, Paul. Scott, you made it on the wall here. Same as Landon. Burger Man, I'm going to be making your shop soon. I bet I bet you don't even watch my videos anymore. He's probably like, I donated those two large amounts and you haven't even put my villager out there. I'm done with this dude. <laughs> I can assume that's what a lot of you are like, but it's rather hard getting all these villagers out there in the world. Speaking of, I haven't even got my brother out there yet. He's donated. He's made it on the wall. Whoops. Sorry, Dylan. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. That's the wrong one. I'm going to hammer away.